Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of a rough start there at the very beginning, but we're here with the Gears of War Major League here by ESL. I'm Mike Star, and I'll be bringing you all the action around one match here for the week. GPP taking on Citadel Gaming. It'll be good if I actually started the game. That is okay. And these guys are ready to rock and roll right here. These guys are the two of the greatest teams in our region, duking it out here. Fortunately, we didn't get to see GPP last week in week one, and that was due to uh, them unfortunately having to cash in both their wild cards for this match. But what is good is that we can see them this week. Now, they unfortunately had a little bit of a rough start to their week as well. I do believe they were 0 and 2 at the start of this one. Citadel, they played all right there as well. Now, they, this time, though, they both get to use their core rosters here in this match. I'm excited. You should be excited. And remember to. Uh, to, to be sure to, to really check out this action, promote it. Let me know on Twitter who you think is going to be taking things out. Of course, this is a broadcast by Gao Oceania, community hub here for Gears of War in the APAC region. I'm excited for it. I really am. Match going to begin. First map going to be Clock Tower, followed by Fuel Depot and Canals for map, map number three. Now, if needed, we're going to go to map four, Mansion, and map five, Gridlock. And I'm thinking it could go all the way. The way this format works, though, are these teams are playing for $1,200 over six weeks. Here, it's a very short season, and let's bring the action right here. We've got, we're going to see these guys. We're going to be looking aboard with my, uh, with my guys from GPP. Lumberjacks will be running up the top of the stairs there as well, and we'll see what uh, he might be able to do with this one. Getting a couple of shots over through to the back wall side. Nade's going to be picked up there as well, as we do have a player from the Cog team going to go ahead and get those. Now, players yeah. over on the sniper side, they're actually going to be focusing on the sandbags and jail side of the map. Now, that's going to be the Citadel squad playing as the Locust team, and you can see right here, Migrant. Now, he's, he's on this jail side. Nade's going to be coming out. He doesn't want to push too forward aggressively, but Ubi, on the other hand, decides to overcommit just a little bit, gets stuck on the wall, which was not ideal. Rogue is actually going to down Ubi. Of course, there's Migrant down to down Mercer. Rogue is going to down Migrant, and the Nade will clean up two plays from the Lurkus team. That's a 3v2 right here, and actually, Sindim is going to take down one. Lumberjack takes down Sindim as well, so Metapod in this 1v1. He gets shot in the back also, and that's going to be Lumberjack with that final kill. He's going to secure that first round, and they are going to be going up 1-0 to zero here on on Clock Tower. Now these guys like to play this Clock Tower strat heavily up top as per normal, but you know, you notice that round, the Cog team, they sent one player down bottom. No one was really there to contest, so they maybe have to pay a little bit more attention down the bottom of the map, make sure that no one's, one, going to go for a flank, and then two, no one goes for those power weapons nice. either. Of course, we have all four players from the Cog team up top this round as well. The crossover from Lumberjack trying to make something happen. You do notice two players over on this host spot, but Clutch is actually going to down Ubi. Now, we have Clutch actually going to be able to clean up Metapod, then he's going to clean up Ubi. Simdips over on this back wall is going to be... Be contested, sorry, from the middle of the map. Now, over onto the jail side, it just all ended just like that because of what Mercer and, you know, with Rogue with the assist, Clutch, what he was able to do, and Lumberjack as well. They all worked as a team. They got their crosses on, and they were able to clean up a lot of these uh, a lot of these rounds right there in that early stage, or rather a lot of these kills. They were able to get those, you know, that, that, tip, that double kill there from Clutch at the very beginning. Then he was able to lead in, of course, after. And I noticed Clutch, he was the one who went for those grenades last time, I do believe. And you do see him doing so again. No one's really going to be in a position to really stop him. We'll even be able to see that one. But Citadel, they're going to try and mix it up. They're going to try and play the aggressive. They know they have the numbers up top, so they're going to be aiming for that one. Clutch has already managed to get back up top. Lumberjack's going to take down Simdips as well. Clutch needs to get this 1v1. His team is already caught back up with him, and they're going to be able to down Migrant right there. Last one alive is going to be Ubi as he tries to go through down the middle of the stairs to try and just catch up and see what he can do. He's going to down one player, but it's going to be Clutch who gets taken down. Rogi's going to get the headshot there on Ubi. And actually, that was Metapod who was last, last alive. He had the sniper rifle in his his hands and he's actually was able to get one headshot. He's going to get a good shot on a second. Players coming through that top jail side, top mid stairs, going to clean him up. That's going to be Mercer with that final kill. That brings the round three to zero at the moment. Definitely incredible stuff there by him. They they've definitely played some uh, some good games so far. You know, they've played it well. They've played their positionings well. They've got 3-0. They started off to a rough start last week. However, you know, I mean, you can't, you can barely tell that. These are why these, this team, GPP, is one of the best teams in our region. They had, a, you know, they have a, they've had their ups and downs, 
but this is definitely one of their up moments. They're definitely very, very strong on Clock Tower as well. You are going to be seeing still this early breakout early, you know, with those smokes out in the, the top sniper side of the map. Clutch has decided to push over to this jail side. He's going to uh, try and contest this one player who tries to test him back. Go for the shot. Gets the good kill there on Ubi. Second player up top mid-stairs. Nades coming out there as well. Sniper picked up by the comp team. Shots over the back. Killer. He'll get taken down. Mercer. Can he pick off this headshot? He's aiming it down. He's trying to assist his teammate. Now, he wasn't able to save Clutch, but he was able to get the down on Migrant. Now Migrant straight away picked back up by one. He's going to get down the second time. Only one more life left for him. The active relay has come out from Mercer there as well. So he's aiming up the shot. Metapod and the rest of Citadel have gone down the stairs. You know, it's a 3v3 at the moment. Mercer, Rogi, and Lumberjack on up against Metapod, Sim Dips, and Migrant. You know, they're just waiting a little bit. They're trying to see what they can really do, explore their options. Of course, with that sniper in mind, the, the Citadel team, they don't want to lose that height advantage because that could definitely be deadly. But you notice already one here, a, a contest over down the bottom. That was Sim Dims who took down Rogi. But now Lumberjack and Mercer, they rotate down the bottom instantly and they're able to uh, take out that kill. Making it back into a 2v2 situation. You know, it's tied, but we have Mercer with that sniper rifle. Now Mercer got taken out a half, three quarters red right there. And of course, that was definitely... Uh, well positioned for him for, for him to really bear out of there. There was only actually one person's lance fire that was crossing him out in that instance. You know, only one player's connected, so he definitely needs to be a little bit more careful in the future. You see him rotating over to this boom shot side, though. Um, he might even be, uh, you know, courageous enough to actually be going for this boom shot, or rather his teammate to be going for the boom shot as they do get that control. Of course, sitting back at this boom shot uh, side with that boom, with that long shot in mind. They, they, the opposing team might have those name control, but until they actually get that sniper side, of course, that's going to be the main, uh, the, or really the main advantage for them for that fight. But I was going to say, I was, I was going to be hoping for Migrant to really wait that one out, but he just got popped there by Delhi with that boom shot in mind there from Lumberjack. Lumberjack's actually full red. Mercer goes over to the side. Metapod had those nades. He threw one. Couldn't really make it work. GPP go up 1-0 to zero here in the series. And that, just just like that, is the first map here. It is a best of five series as well. So, I mean, first to three GPP are one third of the way there already. Now, last week, we saw some great games. We saw some close games. We saw some thrashings. This week, I'm hoping for it to be a little bit different, of course. Parallel to this, you know, we had Incept, Boneyard Bandits. They cashed in the wild card, so that's been played later in the week. Citadel Unknown and Upper Offenses and GPP are in the 8 p.m. time slot. And 9 p.m. time slot will be Unknown, Incept, and Boneyard Bandits, Upper Offenses. Of course, we're not exactly sure which matches out of those two, respectively, are going to be going through onto the stream. I will really work with what's on schedule and what's really going to be the most exciting match for everyone to really see. Now, we have uh, one player who has left the game unfortunately enough or merely hasn't re been able to reconnect um, and we will be having of course the sides swapping at the same time so we'll need to update that scoreboard at the same uh, at the same instance and we can get this game going once uh, things are golden now a great thing about having uh, you know having things on a dedicated host is that I can host things and decide when the game really needs to start. It's really great uh, in Gizmo Ultimate Edition that that feature does exist, and of course the map cycle option really does help. So no needing to go back into the main menu. We're straight into the next lobby, and once these guys get on the right sides, we'll be ready to hit this game right uh, right here. Now let's see, let's see how this will really play out. Lumberjack and uh, and Metapod, you know you want to swap on over. You know that's what really wants to happen. Uh, yeah, and uh, remember, for those teams who are competing, if you guys do have a logo and you want me to, and you want to send it to me, you know, those teams that are competing who are watching and realize that, you know, I've added some logos to the mix, try to up that production value a little bit, feel free to send them to me. Uh, and we can get that going as well. We do have all four players on the right team. Citadel, Metapod, Ubi, Sim Dims, and Migrant taking on GPPs, Rogi, Lumberjack, Mercer, and Clutch. Let's get into the game right here. Execution, Fuel Depot, ready to go. Right here on map number two. Remember, it is overall one to zero to GPP right now. Best of five. They need three maps. Who knows who's going to take it? Um, and yeah, who, uh, who? let me know. Who, who do you think is really going to be taking it out? Will it be, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, will it be a little bit one-sided? Will it be a three-deal? Will it go to a map five? You know, once again, I do, you know... The GPB squad are definitely very strong on Clock Tower, so I think that definitely favours them in that aspect. But Citadel Gaming, they can answer back here on this fuel depot. Um, you know, the, the first map choice, of course, it works in a little bit of a, of a different process that you guys may be uh, not used to. So the first map gets banned by the uh, out of you know the six map rotation that we have gets banned by the away team. The whole team chooses first map, and then it alternates obviously from there. So Clock Tower was a GPP uh, map, and 
you know, that definitely could have had a big impact for that. For reference, the banned map, of course, was War Machine. That Citadel did ban out from that. But into the game we go. Uh, yeah, and we, you know, we, we go through that right now. We're going to be on board with Lumberjack. Now, Lumberjack loves the sniper for his team, but he's not going to be going it for this time. Now, he's going to be, uh, Nade's going to be picked up from both squads as they go to watch over through to this boom shot. I'm glad to see I've done the weapon spawns right, because last week I had that issue where I just, you know, I forgot to do it. It's been a while. It was a little bit rusty, but it's good to go for this one. And we already have those nades coming in. Rogi's going to get taken down, and Moose is also going to get taken down. Strong start there from the Citadel squad. Now, you notice the contention over on to that uh, helipad. Clutch is going to take down Margaret. Clutch is also going to get taken down. That's a little bit unfortunate for him. Leaving Lumberjack the last one alive. Play rolls through the bullet. I call that a low roll. And uh, that was Sim Dims who was able to execute that, I do believe. Or was it, uh, or was it Metapod? Either way. They've been taking tips for myself, and I definitely like to see that. But that's Citadel Gaming's first round here in the series. This is what we want. Uh, and, you know, we, we do see this next round. With this next round starting up, we'll jump on board with the Citadel squad. I mean, I've been on board with the GPP squad. I thought they were going to continue their momentum forward. But with uh, with this round starting up, they're, you know, focusing over on this helipad. Two players are there. Mike is going to be one of them. He has those grenades. You have one player over on the middle side as well. Sniper out over, or rather, pistols out over into a sniper corner. Nade's going to be coming out once again. A little bit of a trade there from Sim Dims and Clutch as well. Trading those uh, trading those downs. We're able to pick up, the Citadel are able to pick up their teammates. He able to pick up a couple kills in the process, and now it's a 4v2. Rogi and Lumberjack going to be the last one to left them. Ubi was taken red a little bit, and Metapod actually taken down. But you see the concession over on to the actual boom shot of the map, and is just completely demolished from the team of Citadel. They currently lead 2-0 as well, and I mean... This is definitely a complete turnaround of what we saw on that clock tower map. These players pick their maps that they're strongest at first to get them out of the way and to get themselves a guaranteed victory. Now, you saw GPP do it. They won 4-0 on that clock tower. This time around, though, I mean, we're seeing what these guys can uh, what these guys can do on that uh, Citadel on the Citadel squad because they're, they're leading 2-0. They're halfway there to be able to secure a map and, you know, we, we shall really see how that will really pan forward. From this one, Boomshot going to be picked up, and Lumberjack is going to get taken down, Clutch is going to take down, Migrant Sniper also picked up there from the cog team of Citadel Gaming. We have the uh, the Lancer out from Ubi as he tries to pull back, okay, taking a half red once again, as seems to be the trend for him. Boomshot will take down Metapod, pushing back over to the doorway here. Ubi decides to back out, but he will get taken out. It's not going to be a flawless victory for Citadel, because GPP are able to secure themselves that round. You're going to be seeing, though, with uh, with this 2-1 to one so far. This is what I like to see. We don't want to see a whitewash. We want to see it to go down all the way to that round 11. We'll see how it will pan out. Next round, going to be starting on up round number 4. As we do see between these two teams as they push on forward, get those pre-actives down as well. Nade's going to be picked up there by that cog team. Locusts have seemed like they don't want to really worry about it. Clutch is going to be contesting over through to this middle side. He's going to have teammates going around through every every corner from Citadel Gaming. They wrapped a rad clutch like he was nothing, like he was the piñata. Everyone wanted a piece of that. Migrant able to get great nade kills there. Taking out his teammate doesn't matter because he was still able to take down two other players. Ubi's going to finish off that final player too. Migrant actually 6-2 and two for himself and that really is a giant thing for his nades i mean i can count at least four times where he got nade kills two of them of course each were doubled uh doubled up so it was definitely something uh, you guys got to keep uh, keep an eye on for him with those nades it's definitely very very strong next map though or next round rather going to be starting up three one one round away from citadel be able to tie up the overall series and we will see how that will play out now you see simpsons at the moment trying to get that cover shot off and he's able to take down mercer mercer's going to be feeling silly about himself for that one but clutch will be able to take down with those grenades clutch doesn't get the shot connected and migrant's going to take him down there as well Rogi is here in the Stuck. He doesn't know how to get up the cover. He's, you know, he's not going to be having the best of times. Uh, Mercer's going to be right there behind him, though. And that boom shot would not be able to connect. Visibility was, of course, not the best because of that smoke grenade as well. As Metapod just tries to close up. He's going to be pretty much watching. And that is going to be all she wrote there for GPP. At least they were able to take a round here on the map. But that is going to be a four-run determined victory here from the Citadel squad. Which means for map number three, we are going to be going to a... Uh, to a canals right there in that one that is okay because that canals is what we are uh, what we want you know it's, it is uh you know canals is a great map in entirety so you know you definitely want to be uh keeping an eye out there for that one 
these guys, you know, they play this one well. They, they have some great snipers on their team as well that you can't rule out because they get some headshots and you won't even be able to believe how they even got those. But remember to spread the word and remember to uh, to, to really show some spirit and some and some love for the ANZ, uh, or well, the APAC, really, the APAC Gears of War community because um, that's what we want. Um, and, of course, the sides are going to swap, so I need to update that score again, which is always some great fun. Um, and... Uh, yeah, for those who do, uh, for those who I brought up, I do see some tweets as well uh, from those organizations, all those teams that want to send me their logos. Just feel free to uh, flick that to me on whatever whatever method you have, uh, you know, that you have me on, and we'll be able to receive that uh, somewhat uh, in somewhat timely fashion. Of course, I did add that very very quickly. So, uh, of course, that's only on the overall matchup uh, screens. I do have quite a few logos already, but we should be good once uh, once we get the, those players in. Of course, clutch. Not entirely ready just yet. Just waiting to uh, to get these guys maybe sopped on. And we can really get this game going. But Execution Canals, who is going to take it out? I want to hear your thoughts about it. And I'm looking in the chat there as well. Talking about, uh, you know, the map rotations in, uh, in some Gears of War in the ESL, in the ESL North American. I mean, who watched the ESL North American uh, season finals? I know what I did. It was slotted at something like 6 a.m. Sydney time. It was definitely brutal. It was a work at the time, and it's great that I, uh, you know, work for an esports company. It was de definitely did not get any flack uh, for that one. But yeah, we were able to watch that. I had some great, uh, you know, I had some great experiences watching that one. I really wish I could actually made it over myself uh, to be able to witness that firsthand because it was definitely a great event. It's just going to be starting up, of course, momentarily. Uh, I should probably update that scoreboard as well. It'll definitely be a great thing. And there we are. Of course, this is only a community broadcast here from Gal Oceania. Feel free to follow all social media outlets. Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and of course, this Twitch channel, all at uh, you know, Gal Oceania. And for ESL Australia, the people running this circuit, be sure to give them a follow as well. That is at ESL Australia on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. And uh, you know, their Twitch doesn't get used very often because, uh, you know, as you can see, there are different uh, various... Uh, media outlets for different uh, different titles. So, key point in that is be sure to just give them some love. I'm um, they you know putting twelve hundred dollars in to the uh, the overall scene itself is definitely going to be something you want to uh, you want to be supporting here from the East Australia guys. And uh, I think we're good to go here. GPP and Citadel Gaming Canals is going to be starting up right here. Execution, of course, the general game type had some previous game types in other uh, another Gears of War. You know, like King of the Hill from Gears of War three started off with uh, potentially another game type here in Ultimate Edition. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out. Execution, back to the basics, like we all know and love from Gears of War 1. And we are, yeah, we're gonna be starting up here on this one. And yeah, 1-1, one, one. Tied, uh, tied scores. And we'll see how it will play out ultimately in the end. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this one. I am excited to see how it pans out. I'm excited to see what happens by the end of this to, to really see which team will be able to tick over a, uh, a win here to take the lead again. Will it be GPP once more? Will it be going map for map? Or will Citadel take the lead? You know, don't really, not really going to be deterred by, you know, a 4-0 loss in map number one. They took it a 4-1 win respectively as well. And uh, we'll see how it will play out ultimately there as well. And yeah, I'm going to be excited for this. I'm excited to see how this map will play out. It's been great so far. And of course, it's only been a little bit of action of what's going to be actually in store for the overall night itself. Let's get going. And we're going to be on board with Simdims, who I am uh, going to be assuming is going to be going for this sniper side, of course. We do have some uh, good uh, sniper players there for the team of, uh, of Citadel. So we can possibly see them put it to work in uh, you know, a little bit later date. Lumberjack's going to be picking up one sniper. Simdims with the other sniper battle here between the two towers. You can see them swapping between both perspectives right here. Uh, Lumberjack has actually gone over to the high side though. He's going to be trying to maybe line up a shot. Simdims will now rotate there a little bit later. Now I do believe he spotted one player. Either way the call out should have happened there from his team. Most going to take down Migrant over on that middle bridge. See Brogan trying to get the crossover there as well. And uh, you know these guys will be trying to just close out, uh, close out a couple of extra kills over on this little side. Of course testing forward. Clutch is going to get taken but Ubi gets dropped there by Mercer. Now this is going to be an important one because we're going to be having Metapod trying to push that one forward as well. You see, uh, you see 
Mercer trying to get these down as Lumberjack tries to assist. Mercer gets taken red, but it doesn't matter because the good teamwork from Mercer and Lumberjack will be able to uh, to take them out and get the first round on the board. Definitely highly contested on that high side as well. I wasn't really expecting Ubi to actually push forward to take out Clutch, but it was a, it was a well-played thing for him. Maybe wasn't sure where Mercer was exactly because he definitely left him out when Metapod pushed forward as well for the revive. It worked, but it didn't because, you know, you, you got the revive, but he got taken down almost instantly as well. So possibly thinking that a little bit better. You see Simdim's going to be weapon sliding with this sniper rifle as well as they push over to the middle of the map. Nades will be weapon slid, and uh, we will see uh, what these guys can potentially come up with uh, in this next uh, in this next round. Either way, we'll see Mercer looking over to uh, possibly go for this talk. They're swapping over perspectives right now, trying to find who's in the action over this, uh, uh, on this angle side. Simdim's actually going to take that. Mercer as he picks up the talk, but it's a bad mistakes there. From uh, Mercer coming out of, of course, Kiwi Land, New Zealand. Maybe it's a bit late for him. Maybe he's just uh, not thinking with his head straight. Or maybe he just doesn't have any head anymore because he got popped off there by Sim Dims. They just can't, you, can't, you just can't duct tape that one back together. Either way, Lumberjack with this sniper. Migrant over Middle Bridge. Clutch watching, of course, over on the riverside. Ubi just starts uh, shooting some bullets, you know. Why not? He says. Brogy, of course, over on the high side. And, uh, you know, something over there in wrong directions right now. Metapod. Just still looking to see if he can spot any, any players, any angles. Simdim still with this sniper rifle as well. And uh, yeah, we uh, we will see what these guys potentially can do in this in this next stage moving forward. But what I can tell you, what I can safely tell you, is uh, that these guys are looking to make a huge impact here. Um, and they uh, they definitely want to make something happen. Whether it does or not is uh, going to uh, going to be determined in these uh, next you know, couple of minutes still remaining in this round. I mean, two and a half minutes overall, four minute duration. I mean, once you get the first kill, once you get past that first minute, the Gears of War round really feels slow because you're normally expecting it to, you know, to, to uh, as we saw in round number one, to really be ending quite uh, quite well. And I mean, I guess we just didn't see that ultimately in the end. But, you know, I mean, we'll see what we can see and we'll do what we can do as the nades get picked up right there as well uh, from from the, uh, the Locust team, of course, Citadel Gaming the ones to do so. So there's still 1 minute 57 and uh, counting down on the clock there remaining in it this round. Swap between the players. No one really wants to make any mistakes. Per stand the play as well. Slap going to also be picked up there uh, by... Oh, no, actually, Sim Dim still, still has that sniper rifle in hand there as well. So my mistake there for that one. And uh, you can't see him, of course, just swapping it across the other uh, map there. But, I mean, you know, we still have those weapons going to be respawning, of course. You know, we have those snipers back in place. Second sniper is going to be picked up also. That's Ubi. I mentioned another sniper play there for the team of Citadel. Ubi is an absolute freak there at the same time. Migrant's going to take down Rogi. So it becomes a 4v2. So definitely a wall uh, round round for the Citadel guys. So, you know, they're taking off their picks slowly. They're basically playing with their prey right here in this round. That rounds up to them. They're boxing them over onto their side of the map. Lumberjack still has a sniper though, so you definitely can't rule him out. And I think I think we'll stick a ball with him because, uh, you know, he, he if he's going to make a play, it's going to possibly come up to him. Now, overall, we do have Lumberjack and Clutch left alive. Clutch definitely knows how to clutch it up. It's in his name. He needs to make it happen. I mean, that would have been an amazing shot if Lumberjack was able to shoot that one. Now, they know that someone's coming on the flank. He's going to be pushing forward the front angle. Now, Clutch is able to take down Migrant. I told you he knew how to clutch in his name. And uh, you have some good shots there on Metapod as well as he gets taken down. Fair play there. They need to be able to make sure they can take down this kill. They can. They take down Ubi. Metapod drops as well. As you see them try to just push on forward. Now Lumberjack is going to take down the kill. And Clutch takes down Simdibs. That completely just turned around. It slowed down. And the second they split up, Clutch knew he had to push forward on the two in front. Now, they might have been able to you know, just turn around completely and get that pits on that play that was flaky. You know, get that 2 one But they decided to beat the odds. Go for that 2v2. And I mean, it was even a 2v1. Or rather, a 1v2 when it started. Because Clutch started the fight by himself. He picked one. And he walked away with that one as well. Now we do have that sniper picked up from both squads. Migrant over into the middle of the map, just pushing straight through to the other side and just going to be holding that angle. No one's going to be there just yet. Nades come out there as well as they picked up from the cog team. Clutch gets taken down from uh, from that sniper up from Simdims as Metapod gets the down or gets the kill rather on Clutch. Mercy drops there as well as Migrant takes down Rogi. Lumberjack, last one alive. He's not going to be in a, in a fun time right, in a fun place right now as he gets taken out. And uh, that's going to be a second round for the guys at Citadel. They're currently leading 2-1 to one in the overall score. And I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking right here, you know, these guys, they're, you know, they're, they're currently down in the overall round. Or rather, you know, the Citadel are down in the overall round. So GPP is still leading 2-1. to one. I do apologize if I confuse everyone by saying it backwards just then. I can't read. It's all right. 
Um, and yeah, you know, we start this next round and see these players push forward. Now, Citadel is still down by up, but they took it a very nice round earlier. It's all about giving those rounds back to back, you know, getting those kills playing off it. As we saw the first, as we saw nice. the first round they took, they, you know, they were able to slow things down and, you know, they, they, they were able to, you know, try to make things happen, but it was the fast rounds that actually got the blue in. It was those fast, aggressive plays that pushed GPP out to their limits and they were able to take them out from there. Rogi with a nice kill though on Sip Dibs, you know, it's a 2v3 at the moment. Rogi's actually going to get down, so it's back to a 2v2 right here. Most go for this talk where leaving Clutch in a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a bad spot. Sorry, Lumberjack in a little bit of a bad spot because he got taken out. It was 1v2 over on that high side middle bridge. And uh, you know you can see him get taken down. Now Bursa has the last one live. He has a one v fight. He's trying to pick a little bit of fight with that Torquo. Play it backed off a little bit now. He gets one good shot on that player. He's gonna be going for that contestant. He's able to get the kill and he's trying to back out around the pillar, but he was taken down. That's gonna be Metapod who takes down the round as well. He had that lancer in the back there on that high side connection angle. You know, he had that lancer, he was he was lancering, and then he went on forward with the Dasher to clean up that kill. Overall though, I mean it was it was well played there by him. He got the round, he played it safe, he didn't want to commit too much and let Deadly recover, so he pushed it and got that round of smart plays by them and we see this next round and we saw the current score overall tied to rounds apiece so of course first of all for those who are not maybe familiar with the Gears of War scene first of all execution single life per round so is picked up here from both teams as Nades picked up from the cock team that's going to be clutch with weapons lead that one he has to pay attention though from the Lancers from the side as we have Ubi going to be the one to say keep down Mercer gets dropped there as well and uh, we had a migrant seeming like it was like he didn't, didn't know exactly where uh, where Rogi seemed to be apparently. Uh, as uh, you know, he really got taken down quite easily. Better probably going to take down a nice kill before he getting shut down himself. Now it's a 2v1 situation as we have Sid Dibs taking on Clutch and Lumberjack. Lumberjack, oh, sorry, Clutch is going to be able to secure that kill there as well. That's 3-2. to two. One round away from being able to secure the map is going to be GPP. But Citadel, they'll be going round for round at the moment. I definitely think they may be able to make something happen. Who knows how it will play out as we are. We will see what these teams are capable of in this round coming up. And, you know, we'll just have to see really how it plays out in the end. Now, I'm looking at these guys. I'm, you know, I'm looking at the guys from GPP to, uh, to need to play a strong defense here. Because we know Citadel, once they want to mix it up, they'll play a little bit more aggressive. Now, over on this middle bridge, you see they've got that high side covered. And they're just going to be trying to, you know, sort of make sure that they're not one, going to get naded, not going to be caught out of spot. You've got players watching on either side high end. And just to make sure that no one's really going to be going on the flank. But those smokes are out also. So that's going to be causing a little bit of visibility issues for those sniper players. Now look over onto this top side as well. You're going to be seeing with these players over, you know, Ubi's still remaining on this middle side bridge. He sees the angle on the players from GPP. Clutch is going to get the nade out though. And he's going to take down Ligon. Pushing down. And we're going to have Sim Dibs getting dropped. Metapod also going to get dropped. This is a great round here from the team of uh, of GPP. There only one player left to deal with. That's going to be Ubi. He's got four players to deal, but his guts won and as he'll rotate back down the map. Sniper right, going for that re active reload as he'll get half or yeah, third red right there as he'll rotate back to the opposing side bridge. Talk about going to be picked up either way, and he looks to possibly get a shot off. Now, he's only going to be... I think he might have got the leg there, but I don't think he actually properly connected. So he wasn't able to get any damage off that one. Still going for these active reloads. I know the player's going to be coming through these bridges as well. Just trying to see what kind of shots he can get. Now, remember, Ubi is a freak of a sniper. So I wouldn't really be surprised if he gets any freak shots in this moment. Of course, player's going to be there. Just barely missing the head there with that shot. Getting some good shots there on Clutch. But Clutch, of course, just going to be able to hold his ground. Had that, uh, that high up balance cross on the stairs really worked in Clutch favor and that is going to uh to be that map there as well for them 4-2 is the overall scoreline here in this game gpp go up two to one in that uh in that overall scoreline as well so i think with that being said uh you know these guys definitely showing some fighting spirit uh they, you know, Citadel guys, they, they, they got a couple of rounds for themselves so far. We've seen a 4 0, 4 1, 4 2. And I'm hoping this next map is going to be a 4 3. Because, I mean, the, uh, you know, the, the, these guys, they, they, you know, they, they like to be playing these close matches. It's been getting closer and closer right, uh, you know, right away. I mean, that's what you want, really. As uh, we have these guys potentially going to be swapping sides again, it is of course going to be Mansion for map number four. So what kind, what other map would you want to see these guys going neck and neck, fighting close, intense, quick rounds 
here rather than that major side of course going to be playing over to that boom side of the map these guys are going to be playing that aggressive uh the aggressive stance players may be running over through the middle of the mansion to those grenades but the fight is focused outside at that boom shot you know over through the mid courtyard or over to the nades but it's focused outside there now we may see a couple of players possibly go over to a sniper if it's a late round kind of game if it goes about to a bit bit of stalemate but it does not really seem to be the case now remember ubi metapod symptoms and migrant for citadel as gpp have this squad of mercer lumberjack rogi and clutch we're starting up into mansion right here as i'll update that scoreboard for you all it is two to one still to them you've got to keep in mind uh, and that is what you really want out of these teams uh, as they start this the next round I mean, I'm excited for it I really can't wait to get this uh, get this going remember of course for any players uh, that are interested or any people really that are interested in seeing some more content remember to follow the channel that's what you want you know, we, we currently have a little bit of viewers here hoping to grow remember to you know, tweet on Twitter or post to the, on the chat who is going to be taking out this series who is going to be taking out this map uh, as we enter into the mansion map map number four in the series between these two great teams of course both arguably top three teams in our region for this one, I mean, both teams actually had a undefeated stint at some point earlier in the year or late last year as well. I mean, they've been one, you know, winning a couple of competitions undefeated. Uh, you know, they've been able to take take things out, um, and you know, they'll definitely be proving on top now. In this league itself, remember GPP have had a little bit of a rough start. You know, one of the players can play that to some uh, fill-ins. They were really able to secure things, um, and you know, they you know they they got taken out quite easily. Now in this one, in this game, you know, it's definitely a different GPP. It's full up. GPP we know and love. The ones that normally play uh, everything as, as best as they can. And you see already a couple of shots coming out. Metapod's going to take down Clutch. We also to have a player from the Locust team dropped out in return. Now we have a couple of shots over at the boom shot. Metapod is going to get dropped. Sipped in. Taken down. Migrant last one alive. He gets one. Takes down Rogue. He turns around for the second shot as well. Rolls past the boom shot. As he, his teammate doesn't want to just drop. His teammate doesn't want to get taken down there by... A, uh, you know, by, by a boom, so he was sort of hiding back in the corner. That was, of course, Mercer. He really didn't want to drop. So getting those shotgun shots in. Lumberjack was just able to push it up, get that boom shot, and that's all she wrote. That's the first round to the GPP squad, as, uh, you know, we do see what these guys are going to be capable of here in this next one. Uh, you know, we will see them, uh, you know, while, while they do try to attempt that, they're going to go over to the next round. You know, they're going to be going over to the, uh, to the boom shot side. Boom shot is a weapon sleep. Boom shot is uh, going to be taken by the one team for GPP. The first boom is going to be doing absolutely nothing. Shots over though, and uh, Mercer should be able to take down the kill there on Metapod. Simpson also gets taken. Meaning the last one alive is going to be Migrant once again. Just trying to throw some nades out. Really wasn't able to make this happen. Lumberjack does get taken down as well. And uh, sorry, Margaret's going to take it, get taken down there by Lumberjack as well. That is going to be all she wrote there again for that round. 2-0 is the round count definitely a strong aggressive round there by gpp they are they've been playing well for themselves they've been playing uh you know, on top of their game but uh we'll see how this really will pan out in this next round will citadel you know I, you know citadel the last time the round they they got uh you know well, the rounds that they were getting before they were switching to canals but they were taking the rounds that they'll play right up to the face they'll push them right up to the point where they can push no more you see who's trying to do the same he's going to take that club Rogi takes up Sid Dib, you know that unsuccessful push. Now Rogi's, uh, Ubi's also taking down Lumberjack, and Metapod gets dropped. Burst is going to get cleaned up, Metapod finally cleaned up as well. So it's 2v1 right here, Lokes play is going to be Rogi, he gets taken down by Ubi. Of course, both former teammates, I might add, back uh, once upon a time, back in the old days, the old young house. Uh, back, uh, back old school from uh, Gears War 1, Gears War 3, or Gears War 1, Gears War 2, Gears War 3. Uh, you know, definitely uh, on the opposing side of things, so it's a little bit more interesting to see it like that. I mean, all these players have been playing for years and years and years. I guess the, the latest player, I guess, would be Lumberjack, or the newest player, rather, would be a, a, a huge Lumberjack from, uh, from Gears of War 3. Other players expanding our history from Gears of War 1 and Gears of War 2, respectively. Um, so definitely a lot of experience under the belt, regardless of what both online and land at that back across both teams. Now, we do have the shots coming from both these guys as Vigan takes down Versa. Ubi's going to get dropped there as well. Pistol shots out for Metapod as Lokes team does go for a little bit of a push. They're going to do it unsuccessfully, though, as they try to revive their teammate. Last live from Lokes team is going to be Lumberjack, though, as he gets taken down. Ubi uh, might take down his own teammate a little bit front of five, but that is okay because that is the round for the Citadel squad. They tie things back up. This is what I really wanted, right? I wanted that round for our basis. It was 2-0. Now it's 2-2. Two, two. It's two straight rounds for Citadel. This is what I was talking about about Citadel as well, pushing right up in their face, right? They try to do so uh, at some rounds. They try to do so in other rounds. And I mean, that round you saw Metapod. He got pushed, but he was able to hold his ground. But it was some nice crossover from his teammates, which really allowed, uh, you know, definitely allowed, some, uh, allowed a helping hand 
two out of the cores. That's how it was, but it's going to be that out of those couple. I mean, you see it. Of course, Fubi gonna be that front runner over the side of uh, Better Fodder, I believe. Shots still go around as Better Fodder does get pushed. Clutch and Lumberjack both get taken out. Ubi's gonna take down the Bursa as well as Clutch and Bursa both drop. We have the kill feed just lighting up, and that is gonna be the round for Citadel as they take the lead here in the series. That, uh, yeah, that is going to, uh, to, to be a 3 2 lead now for, uh, for Citadel Gaming. Margaret leading the way, of course, with Ubi. Four kills apiece there for them. Three kills for Sim Dips and Better Potter. The other end, yeah. things rogue at four. And two for Lumberjack, Clutch, and Bursa, respectively. Let's force a round seven, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if they can do it. Of course, you need to be the one to uh, step on the back up right here. Of course, Citadel Gaming are down, and, uh, down overall in the series, so to, to get this tied, we'll force a bat five as well. Lumberjack going to take down Better Pod and Sim Dips and Ubi all get dropped at the same time. Migrant once again, we'll see being the last one live. Is that player that runs over up the top as well? To the grenades, so we'll more common see the last live list and early contention over onto the frags do happen. So now we're on to round seven. This is what we want, as uh, you know, we do see this final round potentially happen. In, uh, in, in, in play, and, uh, I mean, do we want to see a map 5? I want to see a map 5. Map 5 is going to, uh, to be gridlock. We'll see how that will go. If it does come down to it, that would require Citadel to be able to take out this round. GPP, they just want to close it out. They want to make it nice and easy, get a 3-1 victory. Don't want to force it against that round, uh, that map 5. You know, they're going to be wanting to try to do what they can. They get the boom shot, though. It's popping over to that one. Lumberjack going to be able to get a good shot. Now, Margaret and Ubi get taken out. Metapod's going to get blown up there by a boom shot. So, not looking too good so far. For the Citadel Gaming Squad, and as I say that, that's all she wrote. That's it. Game set and match. GPP take that one out. Three to one. Overall, they did some great work right there. Four three was the overall score. I mean, I mean, you you look at it now, and you're like, okay, the score line four one. Sorry, 4 0, 4 1, 4 2, 4 3. I mean, if we went to about 5, we, we really couldn't do anything better, right? Because you can't do a 4 4. You can't, you, you know, you can't, unless you get a stalemate, I guess, if it goes that tied, or you just completely break the game by getting the exact same, uh, exact same score on. Not too.